Here's your news for March 3rd, 2020. We are kicking off today with news from Monday Night Raw, as Randy Orton has again struck at someone close to WWE Hall of Famer, Edge. During the show, Edge's wife and fellow Hall of Famer Beth Phoenix appeared to give an update on the Canadian's condition after being attacked by the Viper on the Raw after the Royal Rumble. Before the Glamazon could even get a sentence out though, Orton made his presence known and spoke about his friendship with the Rated R Superstar. In his own twisted explanation, Orton said the attack was done in an effort to save Edge's life, as if Edge isn't able to return to wrestling, then he won't risk getting injured. Orton even brought up Edge and Beth's children as part of his defense, claiming that the former WWE Champion will be able to take his daughters to volleyball games without the risk of any more life-changing or potentially paralyzing injuries. In a particularly vicious act, Orton said that it was Beth's fault that Edge is risking his health by returning to the ring, and after making the former women's champion cry, leveled the 39-year-old legend with an RKO. Beth is just the latest person close to Edge who has been attacked by Orton, as he demolished Matt Hardy recently, and we can't help but wonder who the WWE's Apex Predator will attack next as both men continue on the road to WrestleMania 36. Speaking of Matt Hardy, the former tag team champion hasn't had the best showing since returning to WWE a few months ago, but fans shouldn't expect to see the broken superstar anymore. On Sunday, Matt's contract with WWE expired, and ultimately, he didn't re-sign a new deal with WWE, meaning that he's no longer a member of the company's roster. In a video titled Thoughts from the Throne, Hardy confirmed that he's a free agent, and now the WWE have also commented on what happened, thanking the former superstar on Twitter and wishing him the best in all his future endeavors. Matt's first post-WWE appearance has already been confirmed, as he'll be appearing in Queens, New York this weekend at the Big Event Convention, which will also see The Undertaker, Bret Hart, and Braun Strowman appear. Given his success in WWE, there's no shortage of options for Matt to go to next, but it's been heavily rumored that he'll be signing with AEW when the time is right. It's also been reported that Matt could be revealed as the mysterious figure behind the Dark Order, but whatever happens, it seems that the former Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal winner is still going to be busy in the ring, just not in WWE. From one former tag team champion to some new title holders now, as the Street Profits captured the Raw Tag Team Championships on this week's show. Meeting Seth Rollins and Murphy, the pair of Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins gave an impressive effort in what was described as a now-or-never title match, but it was ultimately Kevin Owens who made the difference. Leveling the Monday Night Messiah with a stunner, Owens left the ring in time to allow Ford to hit a frog splash for the win, capturing the Raw Tag Titles. This reign may be short-lived though, as shortly afterwards, it was announced that the Street Profits will be defending their gold at Elimination Chamber against the former champions, and that isn't the only big match to be added to the card. In addition to this match being added, a United States Championship match has also been made, as Andrade will defend his title against Humberto Carrillo. In non-title action, AJ Styles will take on Aleister Black in a no-disqualification match, and with the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view taking place this Sunday, there's still time for SmackDown to announce matches for the show before it airs live on the WWE Network on March 8th. We are taking a break from WWE now to look at AEW, as the company hosted their Revolution pay-per-view last week, which was well-received by the fans. As expected, the stars of AEW gave their all to entertain the crowd, but one wrestler who gave a bit too much was Kenny Omega, who reportedly suffered an injury during his tag title defense with Hangman Page against the Young Bucks. According to Fightful, Omega suffered a hand injury during the match, and though it was initially believed to be a broken hand, it doesn't seem like that's the case, though it's still unclear just how severe his injury is. Hopefully Omega won't be out of the ring for long, as he and Paige are two of the most prominently featured stars on the show, and having the pair have to relinquish the tag titles is a decision that no fan wants to see. Also at Revolution, Cody Rhodes looked to get even with MJF, but before the match even got started, the AEW founder revealed some new ink. Though his wife Brandy has said she is not a fan of the neck tattoo, Cody took to Instagram to comment on it, saying, I'm humbled by the run I've been on and the love of the fans. Incredibly lucky man. 
It was very simple. I wear a lot of brands. I wanted to make sure mine was one of them, and I wasn't hiding it. Since leaving the WWE a few years ago, Cody has become one of the most popular stars outside of the company, and now the former Intercontinental Champion is going all in on his brand and his company. Back to Raw now and before the show, the WWE promoted an epic encounter between Asuka and Shayna Baszler just days before the pair collide in the Women's Elimination Chamber match, but the singles encounter never happened. Instead, the Queen of Spades took on Asuka's tag team partner Kairi Sane, and this change happened because the Empress is currently suffering from a sprained wrist. It's unclear just when exactly Asuka suffered this injury, but it was obviously serious enough that the WWE pulled her from Raw, though there are questions regarding whether she will appear this Sunday. As of right now, Asuka is scheduled to be one of the six participants in this Sunday's Women's Elimination Chamber match, but time will tell whether the Empress of Tomorrow will be allowed to enter the barbaric steel structure. From Raw to SmackDown now, as this Friday's show will be the go-home edition of the Blue Brand before the Elimination Chamber, and will also feature the return of the Firefly Funhouse. According to a promotion video for the show, Wyatt is returning to the Funhouse to address his upcoming match against John Cena, which will take place at WrestleMania 36. Many fans are still reeling from The Fiend losing the Universal title to Goldberg at Super Showdown, but this wasn't the only big win for the Hall of Famer recently. On WWE's official Instagram, a picture of Goldberg celebrating with the title has been liked over 800,000 times, making it the most liked photo on WWE's Instagram page of all time. Though many fans still aren't happy about Goldberg defeating The Fiend to claim the title at Super Showdown, it's obvious that there are still plenty of fans of the Hall of Famer, who will no doubt be cheering him on when he faces Roman Reigns with the title on the line at WrestleMania on April 5th. Now, we all know that Becky Lynch has been one of the most heavily pushed stars over the past year, but now it seems the Raw Women's Champion is adding another nickname to her collection. After months of being called the man, Lynch appeared in a crown to mock the Queen of Spades Shayna Baszler on Raw, leading the WWE's Instagram account to refer to her as The King. One star who saw this was Alexa Bliss, who commented that she's pretty sure that being the king is Corbin's gimmick, as the former women's tag team champion had no filter on her comment. Given the fact that Bliss is on SmackDown and Lynch is on Raw, it's unlikely that fans will see these two square off in the ring anytime soon, but we can hardly imagine the trash talking the pair would have if they ever face off again. Back to Raw now, and this week fans finally got an answer to one of WWE's biggest mysteries that has been going on for months. In November of last year, Rowan started coming to the ring carrying a cage with a cloth covering whatever was inside it. This week, after months of hints and speculation, it was revealed that Rowan has been carrying a giant tarantula all this time, a fact he revealed to No Way Jose in an unadvertised backstage segment. It's unclear what'll happen next for Rowan, as while he's been able to beat jobbers with ease, the former bludgeon brother repeatedly comes up on the losing end when facing actual opponents. Whatever the case, Rowan's mysterious cage isn't a mystery anymore, and we can't help but wonder what's next for WWE's resident Spider-Man. We're looking back at WWE Super Showdown now, as the show wasn't a good night for the Viking Raiders, as they lost on the kickoff show to the OC, but things got even worse after their match. Once the duo arrived back home in the United States, the WWE chose to send Eric home for a few days as he was reportedly dealing with an unspecified illness. This illness caused the former Raw and NXT Tag Team Champion to miss two live events this past weekend, though his partner Ivar was still kept on the shows, teaming with Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre to beat Seth Rollins and the AOP in the main event spot. Given the worldwide concern about the coronavirus, WWE can hardly be blamed for being cautious regarding Eric's condition, as it was definitely the right call to let him rest at home and recover from what was ailing him. In an interview with TampaBay.com, Stephanie McMahon commented on the possibility of the virus affecting WrestleMania 36, which will take place in Tampa, saying, The health and safety of not only our fan base, but also our superstars really does come first. We don't want to put anyone in a bad situation ever, regardless of the circumstance. Those are not risks worth taking. The WWE isn't the only promotion that's been forced to change their plans, as New Japan recently announced that they were cancelling all events from March 1st to March 15th, 
and the Japanese government has cancelled other sporting events due to concerns about possible infection. With 33 days until WrestleMania, a lot can happen regarding the virus between now and then, and the fact that WWE could seemingly be considering cancelling their biggest show of the year to avoid risking the health of their superstars and fans just goes to show how seriously they're taking this virus. At WrestleMania, it's been heavily rumored that AJ Styles will be facing The Undertaker, but that isn't the only big feud for the Deadman right now. Recently, the Deadman appeared in a Twitch stream of popular streamer Dr. Disrespect, and more details have come out, courtesy of PW Insider. According to their report, this crossover has been sponsored by G Fuel Energy Drink, and it's an effort by WWE to reach a younger demographic who are familiar with Disrespect's streams. As a two-time streamer of the year and a big name in esports, partnering the dead man with Disrespect could prove to be an effective way to get younger fans, though time will tell just how many will follow the phenom from the streams to the ring. From one legend of the ring to someone who at least thinks they're a legend, as Dwayne Gill had a lengthy career in wrestling, but now it's officially over. Best known for playing Gilberg, the miniature jobber version of our reigning Universal Champion, Gill has wrestled his last match at an event hosted by Adrenaline Championship Wrestling, where he faced fellow WWE alum James Ellsworth. In a tweet, Ellsworth said it was an honor to be chosen by Gilberg as his last ever opponent, and while Gilberg won't be wrestling, he'll still be making appearances. Responding to Ellsworth, Gilberg said he couldn't have picked a better person to face in his final match, as there is clearly a friendship between the two who have bonded over their many, many losses. And finally today we're ending with news from Raw as the show had plenty to fit in during its three hours. In the opening of the show, Drew McIntyre confronted WWE Champion Brock Lesnar and was able to level the beast with a Claymore kick, building towards the WrestleMania match. After Rollins and Murphy lost the Raw Tag Team titles to the Street Profits, 24-7 Champion Riddick Moss had better luck as he retained the gold against Ricochet. Up next, Aleister Black hoped to get some revenge on AJ Styles, but was forced to go through Anderson and Gallows first before Styles got a pin over the former NXT Champion. After Liv Morgan defeated Ruby Riot in a match that featured fellow Riot Squad alum Sarah Logan as the guest referee, Eric Rowan revealed his spider, and Shayna Baszler defeated Kyrie Sane in the ring. In tag team action, Rey Mysterio and Humberto Carrillo defeated Angel Garza and Andrade, and this was followed up by Randy Orton attacking Beth Phoenix in the main event spot, as the Viper has once again showed no remorse in what he's done to Edge or those he cares about. Though this was all that fans saw on TV, the action continued in Brooklyn, as in a dark match, Drew McIntyre called out the Viper. Instead of Orton, though, McIntyre's challenge was answered by Eric Rowan, who came out without his cage, leading to a Where's the Spider chant from the crowd. After a short match, McIntyre was able to get the win over the former bludgeon brother, and after thanking the crowd in the Barclays Center for coming to the show, he clearly has the crowd behind him, ahead of his WWE Championship match against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Inia.